how to configure RIP on a Cisco router. That's today's topic, and we're going to get started right now. Hey YouTube, this is David Staples. As I mentioned today, we're going to be talking about how to configure RIP, or the Routing Information Protocol, on a Cisco router. Uh, primarily, we're going to be working with version 2. Uh, of course, there's really no reason not to run version 2. But in the previous video, we talked about how to configure a static route. Uh, we don't always necessarily want to use static routes, though. So for smaller networks that you don't want to configure a static route for, uh, RIP is actually a really good choice for a protocol to use. Uh, now, of course, it is a routing protocol. I know we've talked about what a routing protocol is versus a routed protocol. Uh, routed protocols are more like your HTTP, the Telnet, SMTP, SSH, those types of packets that are carried from network to network or from router to router, basically across your network. Uh, the routing protocols are what help to route those routed protocols. So, of course, one of the ones that you need to know for the CCNA and CCENT exams, which, again, those are the 100-105, the 200-105, or the combined 200-125, uh, so the first two are the ICND-1 and the ICND-2. Uh, but all these exams basically are going to ask you certain questions about RIP. So uh, for the administrative distance, of course, RIP is going to be 120, and that is something else that you need to know for the exam. But to get started, let's take this small network that we've been working on. Uh, you can see that we've got five routers here, we've got five switches, and a few PCs. And I want to be able to tell each of these routers about the networks that I know about from this router over here. So that they know how to actually get to that network. Uh, so configuring RIP is actually pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and actually pull up router 1 first. And before we get too far into this, I did go ahead and actually run a reload command on these routers after we did the static route. Uh, demonstrations. So uh, if you're looking for those static routes, they're no longer there. I basically ran a reload because I did not run a copy run start. I didn't do a write mem. Uh, so my routers should be basically back to their original configuration with just having an IP address and a host name here. So pulling up router one here, let's go ahead and get into our enable mode or privilege mode. So I'll type in EM, press enter. And then we want to get into configuration or conf t. Uh, before I do that though, let's just show you that we can no longer ping from router 1 over to router 4. So I know that the IP address of this interface right here is 192.168.7.2. So we'll say ping 192.168.7.2 and press enter. And you'll notice that it's going to time out for all five of these. As I mentioned, the routes are no longer there that we put in for the static routes. I went ahead and wiped those out. So we want to be able to do this though uh, with the routing protocol. So I'll go ahead and come into conf t, or you could type in configure terminal. And of course, now we need to actually go into the router configuration mode. Now, specifically, we're going to go into RIP here. So I'm going to say router RIP and press enter. As I mentioned, we want to basically go ahead and just use version 2. Uh, there's really no reason to use the version 1 unless you just don't want some of the features of version 2. Uh, but version 2 and version 1 both handle IPv4 just fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and tell it that we want version 2. And then from here, I need to basically give it some network statements. What networks do we know about on router 1? Well, we know that we know about the 192.168.1.0 network, so I'll say network 192.168.1.0. And I also know about network 192.168.5.0, 192.168.5.0. And I also know about network 192.168.4.0. Now, just to show you that there's no other options here, uh, you do see that we just go ahead and press the enter key here. So now we've told router 1 that we know about the 192.168.1.0 network, the 192.168.5.0, and 192.168.4.0. So now I'm basically done with this router. That's all it takes. It's that simple. But let's go ahead and go into the, the other routers so that we can configure RIP on those as well and just show you that this does actually configure RIP. So it is really that simple. So we'll go ahead and pull up router 2 here. And again, it's the same commands. So EM to enable mode. Uh, we'll go into global configuration mode with conf t and we'll say router rip. And you'll notice that this command prompt actually changes as well. So instead of just saying config, it does actually show config dash router. So we're now in the routing configuration mode or router configuration mode. And again, we said version two here. 
and then I just need to tell it what networks we know about. So on network on router two, we know about 192.168.5.0 and 192.168.6.0, 68.5.0, and network 192.168.6.0, and that's it. We're done with this one. So we'll move to router three. So enable mode, and we'll say comp t router rip. And here I know about 192.168.6.0 and 192.168.7.0. So we'll say network, make sure I spell it correctly, dot, we said 6.0 and network 192.168.7.0. So I'm done here. Router 4, we'll say enable, comp t, router rip version 2, and here we know about 192.168.7.0, network 192.168.2.0, remember that's my network over here on the right hand side, and I also know about 192.168.3.0. So I'm done with router 4. So my last one, I'm going to go ahead and come over here to router 5, and we'll tell it those same set of commands just for the networks that it knows about. So em comp t or configure terminal, we'll say router rip version 2 network 192.168. Uh, we've got 4.0 here, 3.0 is on the other side, and I'm done with this one. I do remember that on one of the routers I I think I might have left out the version 2 command. I see that over here on, ver on router 3, I've left that out for some reason uh, or by accident. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to version 2 just to make sure that we're all running RIP v2. So now it looks like I've got version 2 on all my routers. So I'm pretty much done. So let's go ahead and take a look at our routing tables. Uh, since I've got these in here, let's go ahead and just type in exit. Type in exit again. I could just type in end. I just prefer the, the exit. I like to step back out of things when I've stepped into them. Again, it's just personal preference. So again, to show our routing tables, just like we did in the uh, static routing video, all I've got to do is say show IP route. And you'll see that I've got some new routes here. It says, well, I know about the 192.168.1 network. I learned that by RIP. I also know about the 192.168.2 network. I learned that by RIP as well. I know about 192.168.3.0, 4.0, and 5.0. And of course, I've also got a direct connection to 6 and 7. So I know about all seven networks now, even though uh, I haven't configured any static routes because the routing information protocol, or RIP v2 here, is actually sharing the information between these different routers. Uh, I know that some of the times in classes I've seen some people uh, kind of go in to say router 1, and they'll put in all seven of these networks on router 1. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that Router 1 doesn't really know about those networks, right? Router 1 specifically only knows about the 1, 4, and 5 networks because those are the ones that are directly connected. It should learn about the other networks from the other routers that are advertising these updates so that they're all kind of synchronizing their routing tables. And that process is what we call convergence. Uh, when all the routing tables have been updated on these routers, they're known to be in a state of something that we call converged. So now just to make sure that everything works, I'm going to come back over to router 1 just like we did before and the last video, and we're just going to try and ping the 192.168.7 network just like we did just a short bit ago before we set up RIP. So I'm going to exit out of my router configuration mode and out of global configuration mode as, as well, and we're going to say ping 192.168.7.2. And now, of course, it's actually going to go through and ping just fine. Looks like we dropped a packet for some reason, but if I ping again, it works just fine there as well. Now, I can also ping, theoretically, the 192.168.2.0 over here as well. Now, obviously, I need to ping a host, so the, the interface over here on this side is 192, well, helps to put in ping, so ping 192.168.2.1, and, of course, it's going through and it's pinging as well. 
So over the last several minutes, we've set up the routing information protocol, or RIP v2, on these Cisco routers. I hope you found this useful in studying for your Cisco CCENT or CCNA exams. Feel free to leave any questions that you might have down in the comments below. And I hope you'll consider clicking on that subscribe button as well. So until next time, you guys take care. Thanks for tuning in.